Wonabenga and lecturer at the Faculty of Law in Prime University, Abuja, Chukwemeka Eze. He joins us from our studio in Abuja. Mr. Eze, it's great to see you and a happy Independence Day to you. Thank you, Nigerians. Right, so there's been a lot of condemnation for the Israeli attacks on Lebanon, and now Israel says it has begun a ground incursion into Lebanon. Do you think Israel will end up with more or less number of allies or enemies at the end of this conflict? Certainly, Israel will end up with uh, more enemies than allies. Uh, but Israel do, does not bother about that because... In 1948, remember May 14, 1948, when Lebanon, Syria, Egypt, even Saudi Arabia, whose uh, officers and soldiers operated under the Egyptian command, Iraq, uh, Jordan, they all attacked Israel. Uh, at that time, Israel was not even in a position to have so many allies. Israel wagered the war, and at the end of the day, uh, it got victorious. So I don't think when the military philosophy of Israel is re re revolves around the existence, sustainable existence, and not necessarily uh, the number of allies or enemies it makes, although it values allies, but uh, it thinks of, it has not forgotten uh, the what happened in Germany in the Second World War. So it has not for, Israel has not forgotten that, and that drives the military philosophy of Israel. So once it feels that its existence will be tampered with, Israel moves on, uh, whether it makes more enemies or makes more friends. But nevertheless, it cannot operate as an island. It needs more friends than enemies. And definitely, it has shown in the votes at the United Nations General Assembly that uh, Israel has more enemies than friends because the number of those that voted in favor of the resolution uh, condemning Israel's uh, war in Gaza were more and more and more than uh, many times before. Now, Israel's main allies in the West, I'm talking about the United States and the UK, all want a halt to the ground operation that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has ordered uh, through his uh, head of uh, chief of army. He's going on with it. Do you think that these countries will eventually have to put boots on the ground to support Israel's military operation? I doubt whether they will put boots on the ground unless Iran intervenes in the war. If it is just Lebanon, uh, Hezbollah, and perhaps a few other countries, uh, I don't think uh, United States of America and uh, UK will come face to face in war against a country like, I mean, some countries like Jordan, Egypt. No, definitely no but they can c confront Iran, and they have been saying so. So if it is just Lebanon, I don't see any possibility of those countries putting boots on the ground, but definitely Israel will put foot on the ground, and I don't think Israel will be relying upon uh, the intervention of the United States of American soldiers putting foot on the feet on the ground before it will take the actions it it thinks it can take. It has fought many wars without uh, the United States uh, forces participating directly in the war. Remember the 1967 war, the Six Day War, and the Yom Kippur War of 1973. So neither of them did the uh, uh, United States forces uh, put uh, foot on the ground. So I don't think they will despite uh, the relationship. But if Iran intervenes, that would be a different ball game. And I think uh, the United States is already taking steps in that regard with the uh, United Kingdom by having forces at the Red Sea and in Cyprus. 
Yeah, because Iran is preparing its response uh, on behalf of Hezbollah and Hamas as well. Now, it's difficult to talk about the morality, morality at all in the war because the lines are blurred. Do you think Israel's actions in Gaza and now in Lebanon, as well as attacks on Yemen, justify some morality for the conflict? Uh, like you say, your interest say that uh, morality is a different ballgame. It's not part of what is considered in this uh, game. The war game is a more serious issue. It's not a time to have conversation over morality, but actions have their consequences. You re remember what happened on October 7, when uh, Southern Israel was attacked and more than 1,000 people were killed and uh, more than 200 taking hostage. So uh, basically, that action, as far as Israel was concerned, it was not one to begin to argue over morality. They needed to defend their citizens, and they had done so, but the world is not satisfied the way they had gone about it. South Africa has gone to the International Court of Justice and expects a situation where it will get uh, initial, the preliminary ruling favors South Africa because under the Genocide Convention of 1948, uh, the ICJ has a, a duty of which has been prog uh, provided for in Article 38 of the Statute of the ICJ. Uh, it has a duty to ensure that uh, uh, world peace is maintained through his judgments, rulings, and other actions. So uh, Israel is under an obligation not to create that climate or environment that we uh, make uh, genocide possible. Although some writers are arguing that uh, genocide has uh, already occurred, some argue that there's likelihood of genocide, some argue that uh, all the elements that will make genocide possible they are present in the current war between uh, Israel and Hamas, and which has uh, dovetailed into that of uh, Israel, Hezbollah, now graduating into Israel, Lebanon. Yeah, and just before we go, I wanted to ask, you know, what you think the leaders around the world could learn from what's going on? Because uh, terrorism, uh, banditry, uh, insurgency, they all belong to uh, people, militants who are in groups like uh, Hezbollah and Hamas. What can leaders learn from the ongoing conflict in the Middle East, what they can do and what they cannot? Uh, I think, number one, they should learn the limits of the use of force, because force cannot solve everything. Remember that uh, Awad Sadat, the f a former military leader of Egypt, uh, used the surprise element to overwhelm Israel to take back Sinai in 1973 during the Yom Kippur War. He was unable to do so despite the surprise element. And knowing that Israel had taken over Sinai in 1967 during the Six Day War, where he didn't succeed, he came back in peace to negotiate after the war. He came back to negotiate with Israel. And Sinai was peacefully handed over to Egypt. Today, Sinai remains part of Egypt. I want our leaders to learn the limits of use of force is that since all matters end at the round table, even the Second World War ended at the table, despite all the programs and uh, genocide. This shows that no matter how much the countries of the, the states fight, they will certainly come to the round table. They should be proactive and allow diplomacy to, pre, uh, to provide a better context for finding solutions, resolving issues, and bringing an end to human suffering because war, one war leads to more wars and at the end of the day it increases human suffering, making a mess of the whole purpose of humanity. And this, I pray that world leaders will take serious and the immediate past meetings they had at the United Nations General Assembly, I thought that more actions would have been taken, but 
It seems that we what is happening in Lebanon, that the only lesson man learns from history is that man shall never learn from history. You put it rightly there because we have wondered about the UN's um, role in all of this. That will be discussed on another day. Chukwemeka Eze, thank you so much for joining us on The World Today. Thank you. Always a pleasure, Amarachi.